There are families up and down the country struggling to cope with their violent autistic children. Cam, shall I go and get your um, chocolate biscuits? Stop that noise! Are they in your room? Stop that noise! Autism is often a hidden disability which affects around 120,000 young people in England. I'm scared of him because you live on a knife edge because you don't know what's coming next and that level of sort of heightened adrenaline definitely experienced split lips, bruising all over. We go inside the homes of two families struggling to cope with their disabled children for a glimpse of what life is like and the challenges they face. Very rarely the day goes by where either myself, my wife or one of our children isn't hurt in some way by uh, by Elliot, our son. Oh, okay, Cam. Okay. And really do we Stop. see or hear from Stop. parents about the realities of life for them and their children. But these yeah. families have invited us into their oh. homes in the yeah. hope of raising awareness about a lack That's of help a and support. If he carries on in the way that he Excuse is, me. You know, he's, obviously, he's obviously he's um, obviously very you know, hard to deal with. Campaigners say some local authorities are failing to provide services that meet the needs of families and their children. The system is not working at the moment for all autistic children and that's an issue. It's terrifying really sometimes because if it comes out of nowhere um, there's always that bit of you that can't quite believe it's actually happening so it's just a case of desperately trying to extricate yourself from that situation that you're in which is easier said than done if um, particularly if he's got me by the neck which he often does every day is a challenge for Ian and Lucy their eldest son Elliot has severe autism and learning difficulties. Social interaction and communicating is difficult, and they say dealing with his condition, which requires constant care, is pushing them to breaking point. He's the size of a very large, very strong 12-year-old, and that's the difference. If it was a toddler having a huge tantrum and flailing around and, you know, scratching you and kicking you, it, you can manage it better but just simply because they're so much smaller. Whereas if you think of when Elliot does it, it's, it's basically like a small man suddenly attacking you. Not everyone with autism is violent though. A US study of nearly 1,400 children on the autistic spectrum found more than half were aggressive or violent towards their families. Elliot is 12 and has the strength of an adult, but thinks like a two-year-old. His parents say a lack of specialist help from their local council has caused his behavior to become increasingly difficult to deal with. We've been living with Elliot getting, um, being violent and aggressive most of his life, you know, that probably first started encountering things like that when he was about five or six or so, I think we probably started. And the difficulty has been as, as he's got older and as he's got bigger and he's got stronger, he's still only violent for maybe 5% of the time, but the consequences of that violence are getting worse and worse. And, you know, whilst he's only 12 years old, he's the size of a 15 year old it's a law of averages that one day one of us is going to get really badly hurt. These cars are just a glimpse of what Ian and Lucy have had to endure when Elliot has a violent episode. Definitely experienced split lips, bruising all over. Ian's had a scratch cornea from a punch. He's knocked me down the stairs before and I've just managed to hang on to the banister rail so that I've not gone the whole way down the stairs. But there's a severe injury waiting to happen, we know that. And the problem is that the help available to you is reactive rather than proactive. You have to get to absolute crisis point when one of you is hospitalised or you've had to call the police out. This is why Ian and Lucy have spoken out. They say they are living in an almost permanent state of worry. So much so they've had to take measures to protect not just Elliot, 
but also their other children. Yeah. So this is Elliot's room and you can see it's not like a room that most 12 year olds would have that we've made quite a few adjustments. The most obvious are the uh, bars that we have to have across the windows. Um, you kind of get used to um, that you know, your child's bedroom looks more like a, a cell of some kind. Um, and it's only when you stop and step back and really reflect on it and you go, God, what a symbol of just how different our life is. Most people do not have to set their child's bedroom up with locks on the doors and bars across the window, but there are times when in order to keep Elliot safe and in order to keep the rest of the family safe, that's what we have to set up. Now, this family story is not a one-off. We've been speaking to many parents across the country and they repeatedly tell us that there is simply not enough support available for their children, some of whom are also very violent. Nineteen-year-old Cameron is one of 700,000 people in the UK on the autism spectrum. He was diagnosed with the condition at the age of three. I'm going to go and do your telly. I'm just talking to Noel. Please, please. Oh, stop. Please, please. Don't stop. It scares me. I mean, it can be quite it's dangerous for you being on your own as camera. Well, yeah. If, I mean, if you weren't here, obviously, I would just go and do it. Um, and if the girls were here, I would do it because to stop this. Because it's not nice for the girls to see and it will probably escalate into more. Cam, yes. stop. Go up, please. I will. Go up now. OK. Don't speak to them. Stop. Don't speak to okay. them. OK. Go on, Mum. OK. Go. And as you can see, Go he's to edging get. towards me. Hannah and Doug have devoted their lives to caring for Cameron, but due to his condition, his needs have become increasingly challenging and his anxiety and stress can sometimes lead to full-scale tantrums. It's really upsetting. It's, it's horrible. Because I love him so much. And, yeah, I don't want people to be scared of him because he's, you know, he is... His, nature is gentle and you know he doesn't he doesn't he's not meaning to be the way he is at all and it's i feel sorry for him because he's frustrated and he can't he can't tell me why or tell other people why so it's horrible it is it's sad really sad how much longer do you think you can continue to cope with cameron's behavior we'll do it for as long as we have to but it's gonna become well it already is unmanageable sometimes um, but the, I don't know because I don't know you know how he'll become as he turns as he gets into his early 20s it could become worse um, but really we need to be well we are thinking about you know him living elsewhere um, because we can't manage his behavior because it is unpredictable and it, you know, physically, I can't manage him by myself. I mean, as you can see, he's tall, you know, facial hair. He's like a man, but he's like a baby, really. OK, yeah. Not doing that again. You know, he doesn't have the understanding. He doesn't understand why you guys are here. Um, and also, it's out of his routine, isn't it? So, yes, Cam. Who's that? No. Almost anything can trigger an outburst from Cameron. Surrey Council, who are responsible for his care, have told us they are working hard with his family to provide additional respite and day support. I, I don't want him to go anywhere that I'm not happy about. Um, so I don't know how long that will take, but if he carries on in the way that he is, you know, he's obviously... He's obviously um, very you know, hard to deal with. Um, it's going to be really difficult. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Yes, Cam. No. It's important to get the point I across can't that. See you. I can't this is not see you. Cameron I can't see you. being unruly. I can't this is his see condition. You. Oh, this no, is what it absolutely. does. Thing. Absolutely. This is autism. Yeah, I can't this see is autism. Are, I can't see you. Sometimes it seems like there's no light at the end of the tunnel in regards to the the support and direction of where 
where you're going to go because we don't you know it's it's hard for us and we don't know how coming is going to be we don't know how the children are going to be we don't know how planning for the future and planning for what's going to happen is has it's just been i mean the last six years seven years of just no direction at all stop going to that eyes this woman who we're calling sam knows just how hannah and doug feel he hit me over the head with a plastic um, object and I had to have my head glued. Um, and I thought at that point it would be a turning point, but it wasn't, you know, I thought I'd get help, but it, it, it didn't really happen. We've agreed not to identify her in order to protect her teenage son, who is now in the care of social services. First I got a bit of help, but then it went monthly, and then it was, right, OK, we wash our hands of you, you can have 48 hours. Um, a year respite from a charity and 48 hours a year doesn't add up so much does it her son was taken into care following a violent incident in a family home in 2011 documents we've seen appear to back up her claims that she had asked for help on a number of occasions this letter from her GP to children's services reads family struggling to cope with child's behavior he goes on to say mother desperate for help I had cried and cried for help I was absolutely exhausted, but more so my family was failed, you know, my children. My other children didn't get attention, or I, gave, I tried to give them attention, but there's a limit to what you can do. And my son was certainly failed, absolutely. So why are parents like Sam and other families not getting the crucial support and services they need? In inpatient care, some of them are still I've come to the National Autistic Society, which helps thousands of people with autism across the country. If children are not having their needs met, then you know, they are being failed and we have to try and work to, to change that system. We need you know, a special educational needs and disability system that identifies all the needs of autistic children that are out there and then puts in place the support and the services to allow them to live you know, the life that they and their families want to live. In a recent report, the charity found families of autistic people in inpatient and residential care being failed due to a lack of trained staff. We interviewed 13 families who had experiences of having relatives who were in inpatient care across both children, young people and, and adults and basically we've incorporated what we found from them and what the lessons that could be learned from that in this report. And what it's really painted is a really stark picture of the fact that the system just isn't working at the moment. Cameron has recently started at a specialist day centre, but mom Hannah tells me she's worried about the future. I do feel guilty all the time. I feel guilty to Cameron, I feel guilty to my daughters. Um, yeah, I do sometimes feel like I, I'm, I'm not equipped for all of it, but I don't really have a choice. I have to, to do it. Um, but yeah, guilt plays a massive part of every day coping with, you know, a child with disabilities, I think. It's For Ian and Lucy, they are determined not to give up. I've returned to find out how they are coping with Elliot. We've definitely had moments when, you know, we've gone to bed sobbing and just despairing at, you know, how is, how is this our life and things. But you can't wallow in it too long because you've got exactly the same life the next day and you've got to be up and you've got to be with it and you know it's difficult because there's no blame you can attach to Elliot there's nothing fundamentally different you can do so you're just carrying on and and hoping to try and learn the lessons from whatever precipitated that particular bout of aggression to try and reduce it or avoid it next time. The Autism Act, which was introduced in 2009, is currently being reviewed by politicians, but laws on their own only form a part of the solution. As for Cameron and Elliot, their parents are their real lifeline. They may face abuse daily, but they don't want their children to be misunderstood. All they're asking for is more support.